Jamo needs to kind of grow up. So Jamo was on Bobby Lee, Tiger Belly with Kalila, and he essentially found the way. And it wasn't even like he was given a layup. He just kind of shoehorned it in there to kind of bitch about Rogan, bitch about Burt Kreischer and how they negative affected his career because of the joke thief allegations, the allegations about him being a bully and abusing Burt when they were younger, coming up in a scene and just being a bit of a bad guy and how that perception of him has negative impacted his career. And I'm guessing maybe he's standing with other comedians. So here's Jay Moore on Tiger Belly finding a way to complain about, to complain about Rogan, bitch about Burt in a way and also call out the fact that he thinks Rogan isn't funny. 3.6 million views. Six. All right, well. Yeah, it's affected my uh, career, actually. <laughs> you, guys, <laughs> you guys and Joe Rogan have affected me <laughs> <negatively> <laughs> in the <laughs> following ways. The comedy but, 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 but what I want to say, though, is... By the way, so he says that, right? He says that, and I was watching it, the full episode, without realizing this bit was coming out, and you could tell it was brewing, and he was angry. And frustrated, especially when he just mentions Rogan's name, you can tell the negative feelings just started like simmering because he then goes out of his way to mention it again. And they don't first, they don't get it at first. And then he doubles down or, you know, he kind of clarifies and kind of goes in a bit harder on Joe. It's fucking hilarious. And you watch it in full time. Yes, in um, time sorry. So what is the truth behind that? I want you like, I mean, okay, it's gonna be an ad like, truth about what? Do truth do about what? I mean, there's, you know, you guys are friends. My and comments to this day not this has nothing to do with you okay. but going see they took they're having another conversation he sits there and just like reminisces about his career and just thinks fuck joe rogan and then so, so he really hates rogan and burt like like i can't post a picture of my dogs without somebody saying did you steal them from burt too <laughs> oh. <laughs> like literally oh that's fo that has affected my career to the tune of millions of dollars when rogan and burt had that thing on Ro and rogan being the comedy end all be all yeah 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 he says that right and then they don't really I, I think they try to ignore it or play like they didn't listen to what he says and then he kind of okay cool i'm gonna clarify what i actually meant <laughs> wow which is interesting yeah that he's the arbiter of funny but can i just <laughs> <laughs> clara could help us up to laugh I, yeah yeah considering I, all I, the I, times I, joe rogan has made us all laugh i, I understand I, that's that's the face of somebody that's pissed off pissed off but i find it incredible i find it incredible how somebody like this who has some actual credits actually let's actually check the credits because um, again, I'm, I don't watch a lot of, you know, um, comedy movies and stuff. But allegedly, Jay Moore's got crazy, crazy credits in movies and stuff. Like, he's actually been in some actual, real blockbuster stuff back in the day, right? So let's actually do... Um, oh, Jesus, look at all these shows he's been in over the, over the flipping... Oh, he was in Picture Perfect. Oh, yeah, true. So look at this cursor of Google. Look at what he was in. Picture Perfect, Jerry Maguire. He's been in some iconic stuff, like iconic, legendary shit, right? As an actor, as a comedic actor, and just all around, you know, Hollywood dude. He's been in some iconic stuff, Scrubs. Look at this stuff, man, look. Look at this stuff he's been in. Excellent credits, right? Excellent, excellent credits. So in my opinion, it's interesting that he thinks Rogan and Burt have actually had that much of an effect on his comedy career when he's been able to succeed in acting, you know, to a very high level, especially in his earlier years, without any trouble. The problem I have with what he said about Rogan and Burt hurting his career, maybe there is some truth to it. Maybe there is some truth with Rogan being the sort of like self-appointed gatekeeper of stand-up comedy. Maybe there is an instance where I could believe where he's maybe finding it hard to get up at the comedy store or get up at anywhere where Rogan was performing cool that might be the case but 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 judging by what i've heard bert say about jay moore judging by what i've heard other people say about jay moore when he was younger and when he was coming up in the scene and he was a big dog it sounded like he was a bit of a cunt it sounded like he was a bit of a prick it sounded like he was might have been a bit of a bully and he just just might have been an all-round bad dude to people coming up unfortunately for jay moore i think in all walks of life these people exist who are funny talented good at what they do but behind the scenes you know to people in the industry they're just assholes usually they get away with it because you know whatever but i think he was really unlucky in that the people he bullied 
the people he disregarded, the people he big timed, ended up being Bert, Kreischer, Rogan, maybe these other people. So it's just bad luck that the ones that he picked on ended up being people who surpassed him in maybe com comedy circles in terms of the amount of success that they've had, tours, money they've generated, and all this other stuff, and maybe how they regard the industry. So you have to be careful. When they always say, like, you know, be careful who you treat on the way up because you see, be the same people you see coming down, it's the truth. But what they don't add to that saying is that sometimes be careful who you treat um, on your way up because you might see them on the way down because sometimes on the way down, they might be coming up. And maybe if you treat them nicely in the beginning, they might actually give you another, you know, they might give you a leg up and say, hey, I remember you treat me nice. Now I'm shining. Let me give you another boost. Let me, you know, let me put my arm around you. Let me get you in a couple of shows. Let me bring you in. But unfortunately, he burned that bridge by treating these guys badly. Now, I don't blame him. Because we know Bert, we know what Bert is now. I can only imagine how annoying Bert was when he was younger. So I don't blame him for bullying Bert. I don't blame him for maybe wanting to punch Bert or maybe physically assaulting him. I don't blame him for not liking Bert when Bert was younger. He probably was as insufferable, as exhausting, as annoying as he is now. Maybe he's more. Maybe he's maybe he's a little bit more annoying now because he's got money and success and stuff, and he's probably proved himself that he can succeed, but while being himself hundred percent, so he doubles down on his, on his kind of toxic traits. But I can see why he would not like a young Bert. I get it. But you're just unlucky, bro. You just bullied the wrong person because now that person ends up being a friend of Rogan's, ends up being one of the biggest comedians in the scene, selling out places and popular and Louis Malarkey. You just have to eat that one. You have to eat it. In other walks of life, it would have been fun. Most people you bully and you kind of big time in entertainment, they don't go on to do things. But Bert went on to be Bert, and now you're fucking brewing about it. And then on a second point, isn't he married to Jeannie Buss? Isn't he married to one of the owners of the Lakers? And it goes back to saying comedians, people in the entertainment industry, they never have enough. They're never satisfied with what they had. This guy's been in some legendary movies, legendary shows has had a somewhat successful stand-up comedy career over a number of years. Despite, I think, I read some comments that said he's a better comedic actor than he is a stand-up, which I'm not sure if it's that an unfortunate thing, but still. He's had a very good acting career, very good TV show career, has had a success in Hollywood, probably written some stuff, maybe directed some stuff too. And now look at him. Now look at him. Now look at him. Still, after all that success, it's not enough. He's still upset. He's still pissed off. He still wants more. And it's like, how much more do you want? You've had it all. You've had it all. Even if he treated Bert nicely and Bert big timed him and didn't give him a bring in, it's okay. You've had your time in the sun. Now it's somebody else's time in the sun. Take a seat, relax, chill, enjoy your riches, especially when you're married to one of the owners of the Lakers, who probably comes from money herself, anyway, you imagine. Or maybe he has made a lot of money because of the Lakers. Regardless, bruh, how old is this guy? He must be like in his 50s, 60s, at Brian Cannon age. It's just odd, man. It's just, that's the one part of comedy and entertainment industry that I've never understood. Maybe it's a, maybe it's because I'm not in it. Maybe there is an addictive element to it. It's sort of like drugs. Once you have it, you just can't let it go. But I think a lot of these people need to be appreciative of actually making it, which is rare. You've made it. In Hollywood, like r hard to do. Imagine all the auditions, all the table reads, all the pilots you film that never get sh seen, never see the live day, like stuff that gets scrapped, all the dreams you get sold, all the red carpet events, all the beggings to be on red carpets, all the late night TV shows, all of that hard work, hard work, hard work. And then you get there. And you sustain that career, sustain that success for a long period of time. You had a good time. And when it ends, I've always been the side of, I'd much rather leave the party on, off my own, you know, with my, by my own choice than be told to leave. I never want to be the old guy just hanging around in the party, waiting for the next event and being told, hey, you're freaking everybody out. You're scaring the children. Please go home, senior citizen. In this case, you get to bow out gracefully, especially with podcasting. I think I feel like podcasting was the perfect industry for a lot of these stand-up comedians to sort of like soft quit Hollywood because it gave me an excuse to just, I'm going to start this podcast where I talk about my Hollywood career. 
I talk about the ups and the downs and it almost makes you, you know, it's not just, it's not as maybe, you know, maybe it doesn't hurt the ego as much as quitting or announcing your retirement, but you get to continue kind of your Hollywood career. You get to perform in front of a camera. You get to talk into a microphone. You get to talk, you know, perform in front of an audience. You get to talk about your experiences and then you get to kind of slowly, you know, slowly go to black, slowly transition out, slowly go behind the curtain, slowly go to stage left. But these guys legitimately want to get pulled off the stage kicking and screaming and they still want to be at the level where they're competing with like Matt Rife and stuff like bruh like your time has gone old man yes maybe Rogan has an outsized influence in the industry I'm not debating that but it is what it is it is what it is and I don't know these guys are like you know they're all kind of a bit you know weird how they kind of treat each other and big each other up but I would imagine the fact that no one comes to this guy's defense, it probably would lend it to believe that most likely he's guilty of the things he's been accused of. He probably was a bad guy. You know, it is what it is. So take it on the chin. Unfortunately, you bullied the wrong person and it ended up, you know, being a big fat L. But your career wasn't an L. You still did pretty well. But you then you can't blame where you're at now because of Rogan. Like what? <laughs> It'd make more sense if you didn't have a good acting career, a good movie career. But, you, you know, you had success, bro. You did pretty decently well for yourself. Like, R Rogan is not, as you said, Rogan isn't the arbiter of funny. Maybe in some space, maybe in LA, but there's other places where you can do comedy. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just think it's hilarious. Um, but it's also funny because I remember there was a pet podcast, I think Two Ladies to Try covered it, where he said something. No, no, it wasn't him. Who says, someone said something about Bert. And then Rogan allegedly heard the podcast and called Bert and said, this guy's chatting shit about you. So, you know, but they're friends, you know, that's what friends do. I guess it's not, it's, it's to be expected, but you have to take some accountability for, you know, basically getting on Bert's bad side. And then unfortunately, Bert becoming best friends with Rogan and then Rogan being Rogan and that negative affecting his career. It is what it is. Take it on the chin. It happened. What can you do? Keep it moving. Keep it moving. That's what you'd hope you would do. But hey. What do I know? Absolutely nothing. Cool. What are you guys saying in the stream chat comments here? Um, that shit was wild. The way that bus be beating and crowding run might have been insecurities. Harlan Williams now this guy. Podcasting saved all failing celebrities' careers, not just comedians. Oh, that's a good point, Johnny Sneed. That's a very good point. All celebrities probably gained a lot from pod a Very good point. Very good point. Because everyone now just talks about what they are into or what they used to do. Which is a good, which is a good way to kind of like, you know, still be involved, you know, even though you're not involved. Because it's funny, isn't it? All the actual popping, all the actual popping celebrities don't have podcasts. The ones that are actually like booked and busy don't have time to sit in front of a short microphone and talk to randoms on the internet. They're busy filming things and being flown out to different locations, right? <laughs> Whereas the ones who aren't booked and busy are the ones talking on the mic. But it's a good thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good thing because a lot of these people probably wouldn't function in regular society anyway. They wouldn't function having a regular job. So it's probably a good thing they get to kind of, do, you know, write their own schedule, do their own thing, hang out with their people, do their thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's okay. I'm all for it. 